geisha continue to uphold performing arts traditions in Japan. A private banquet in the company of geisha is considered the ultimate in elegant hospitality. For centuries, geisha were fashion trendsetters. At their peak, there were 80,000 of them working in Japan. Though the heyday of the geisha is now long past, for this young woman, it is still a dream profession. While an elderly geisha struggles on after the Great East Japan earthquake. On this edition of Japanology Plus, our theme is geisha. We'll take a close look at this unique profession that keeps tradition alive in contemporary Japan. Hello and welcome to Japanology Plus. I'm Peter Barakat. Today I'm in Asakusa, an area which is well known for preserving some of the atmosphere of the old Edo, as Tokyo used to be known until the middle of the 19th century. It's also an area that's closely associated with geisha culture and has been since the days of the Edo period. And even now, it's not unusual to catch a glimpse of one of them on her way to work right here behind the main temple in Asakusa. The word geisha simply means an artist. Let's start off with taking a look at what kind of artists they are. A woman in a gorgeous kimono and striking makeup. This is a geisha. About 1,000 geisha are active today. Contrary to a misconception outside Japan, geisha do not engage in prostitution. Rather, they are skilled practitioners of traditional hospitality and performing arts. Geisha work in tea houses or exclusive restaurants called ryote. An area where these businesses congregate is called a hanamachi, or flower quarter. Tokyo, Kyoto and Kanazawa are known for their hanamachi. Let's pay a visit to a ryote. <laughs> Inside, guests are ushered into an old-fashioned tatami-floored banquet room. Here, geisha attend to diners, pouring drinks and engaging in small talk to create a convivial atmosphere. To add a touch of vitality, they also sing and dance to the music of the shamisen. And they amuse guests with age-old party games, such as the work of geisha. As a geisha's job is to entertain, her personal appearance is crucial. Geisha apply all their own makeup following traditional techniques. The white powder creates a flattering contrast between the face and a colorful kimono. The younger the geisha, the more red she uses. This expresses youthful exuberance. Finally, she applies her lipstick. Black, white and red. This striking color combination is characteristic of geisha makeup. Choosing the right kimono is another important job for a geisha. For example, a vivid cherry blossom motif for spring. From autumn to winter, chrysanthemum and red leaf designs are popular. Evoking a sense of the season is a key feature of a geisha party. Attire is chosen carefully. But the most important thing of all for a geisha is the traditional arts that they perform at parties. They train in singing, dancing and playing musical instruments. Hi. Other skills that geisha must master to entertain their guests include immaculate manners and graceful movements. That's why they study the tea ceremony, flower arranging and other traditional arts, all under the guidance of prominent teachers. A geisha's schedule is packed with training from morning to evening. Then she attends banquets at night. It is common for a workday to finish after midnight. All this
this effort day in and day out is to ensure that they provide an unforgettable experience. So let me introduce our guest for today, Mr. Kenji Watanabe, who's an expert on Edo period literature in general and geisha culture in particular. Thank you very much for being with us today. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm looking forward to being your guide to the world of geisha in Asakusa. Today's guest, Kenji Watanabe, is an expert in early modern Japanese literature. He has visited Hanamachi Geisha quarters all over the country for the past 30 years, studying the history and culture of geisha. Today, he will be taking us to a ryote tucked away in Asakusa to show us what the geisha world is like these days. The word ryote, I know it means a restaurant, but it kind of has a connotation of, for me anyway, politicians having secret discussions mm -hmm. and stuff. Is that accurate? Well, a ryote offers an extremely private environment where secrets are protected, where discretion is scrupulously observed. So, if you're a politician, let's say, or a CEO of a company, you might come here to conduct important negotiations or to exchange frank opinions. Even us, when we want total privacy, it's nice to be able to come to a place like this. So, shall we just go in? I remember from the time I, I was a child, if you asked somebody, in England anyway, what their image of Japan was, there may be two or three things, and one of them would be a geisha. It's almost like a cliché. Um, but I think, really, people have not very much idea what geisha are all about. So, what is a geisha? What is it they do? Well, look at the word geisha. It means entertainer, someone with the skill to entertain. That's a geisha. What sort of skills are we talking about? Mm. It's essential that a geisha be familiar with the whole range of traditional Japanese customs. But that's not all. She must also be cultured. Most of a geisha's customers will be politicians, corporate executives, people like that. In Asakusa, there are many wealthy business owners and entrepreneurs. A geisha must be skilled in handling their conversation. So she needs to be versatile. If she's speaking with business executives, she might have to follow a conversation about, say, the stock markets. She has to nod along and reply in a way that shows she's paying attention. I mean, if, if, the, if the person is talking to you, and you're, even if you're just nodding, I think there's a difference between nodding and understanding what they're saying and nodding and not understanding what they're saying, and that's going to be very obvious to the customer as well. But she can't just go, yeah, yeah. She needs to be able to tune in enough to sympathize, to say things like, what a difficult situation, oh, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. That's what the client expects. To do that, a geisha needs to have her wits about her. The profession of geisha came into being about 300 years ago. In Edo, as Tokyo was then called, there was one officially sanctioned pleasure quarter, Yoshiwara. In its heyday, 3,000 courtesans worked in Yoshiwara, a district that drew visitors from across Japan. The city's biggest entertainment district, Yoshiwara generated 100 million yen a day in today's money. At banquets where customers were having fun, Geisha entertained them with performances and conversation. A strict distinction was made in Yoshiwara between courtesans and geisha. This raised the status of the geisha and helped to differentiate their profession. Geisha were important emblems of culture in that period. They modeled for ukiyo-e woodblock prints, the popular visual medium of the day. They were star players of the shamisen, which was indispensable to the era's popular music. Kabuki plays and novels were often about geisha. Geisha even taught performing arts to children at community classes and in private lessons. 
the geisha were at the forefront of Edo culture, capturing the public's imagination. How did the people of Edo perceive the geisha? They were role models. Mm. Opportunities for women to be employed were very limited in that period. They had few outlets for personal success. In that sense, the job of a geisha offered a woman a chance to have some independence. People knew the geisha world was very demanding, but they also idolized geisha, treated them as pop stars almost. Mm. Have a look at this. Do you know what this is? It's an ukiyo-e woodblock print of a geisha applying makeup, and it actually served as an advertisement. The geisha is using a perfumed white face powder popular at the time. An actual geisha served as the model for this picture, which promoted the product among women in the city. In other words, women would see this print and they'd want to try this kind of makeup. It actually launched a fashion trend. The geisha culture that flourished in Edo spread across Japan in the late 19th century. At the peak in the early 20th century, there were 80,000 geisha working nationwide, 1,200 in Asakusa alone. As times changed, geisha went into decline across Japan. Today, the number of geisha working in Asakusa has dropped to just 25. However, one young woman is on track to become a full-fledged geisha next spring. Chihana, who's currently an apprentice. She's 21. There are no other geisha her age in Asakusa, and she will be the first in six years to attain full status. The geisha world has high hopes for her. She first became fascinated by geisha in junior high school when she saw how glamorous they looked on a TV show. She started thinking she could do it as a career. After finishing high school, she started on the path of becoming a geisha, an exotic world centered on drinking parties. At first, her parents opposed her decision. <laughs> After entering the geisha world, Chihana faced the daunting task of learning all the required etiquette and performing skills. She considered quitting any number of times, but she always rallied and hung in for these three years. Chihana's lovely dancing is accompanied by the singing and shamisen playing of Yuko, who's 91 years old. Yuko is the oldest active geisha in Tokyo. Most of the songs performed at geisha parties are about romance or the beauty of nature. An experienced shamisen player like Yuko adds an essential flavor to the performance. You see, Yuko-san, we have flowers in the room, seasonal decorations, but it's the shamisen playing that really conveys a sense of nature. For example, if I close my eyes, I can almost see the snow falling in front of me. The sound conjures it all up for me. Mm -hmm. 
これが雪の相方ですそうですね雪のところ歩いてるはい。そうですか私たちはもう本当にねこれが自分のね生きがいでございましてねはい。The arts of a geisha really are wonderful。いいあのね本当です。もうこの次生まれても芸者さん。芸者が大好き。全部お客様にお客様のおかげ。今日こうになれたのは。ねありがたいですよ。I'm Matt Alt, and confession time. This is my first geisha party. That's what today's episode is all about: how to comport yourself and enjoy yourself at one of these most traditional ways of unwinding in Japan. Well, hello. Hello. Yo, what's going on, Shima? Now you might be wondering, what does one wear to a geisha party? So am I dressed appropriately for the occasion? Okay. Geisha parties are classy affairs, and you need to dress the part. It's best not to wear short sleeves or short pants. Come by. Come by. One of the fun parts of a geisha party is playing little games in the room together. So, what kind of game are we going to play today? Hi, じゃあ今日はトラトラをやりましょう。トラトラ、what's トラトラ？トラトラ説明いたします。トラトラは簡単に言うとジェスチャーで表すじゃんけんの遊びです。じゃんけんの代わりにジェスチャーを覚えてもらいたいものが三つあります。Okay. まず一つ目はトラです。トラはこのように四つん這いになります。これがトラの形。トラに勝つには和刀内、槍です。そう、槍とトラって。やりの勝ちです。Yes. はい。で、おばあさんですね。そうするともう一人おばあさんがいます。今取らないでください。はい。はい。オッケー。でもトラとおばあさんだと弱いおばあさんはトラに食べられちゃいます。おお。はい。おばあさんとやりの和刀内ですとおばあさんの勝ち。Oh, no. なぜかというとおばあさんは和刀内のお母さんです。お母さんに頭が上がらないということでおばあさんの勝ち。Okay, this is this is complicated, but I'm I'm willing to give it a try. One of those games where when you lose you win. Now I know you might be thinking that a place like this is pretty expensive to come to, but actually there's places all around this city and others in Japan where you can enjoy the geisha experience for a lot cheaper. This is one of them. It's held in Tokyo's Nihonbashi twice a month. Real geisha show visitors their dances and explain the basics of their games. On this day, visitors from France and America and people of all ages are taking part. The event is designed to lift the veil of geisha culture so that more people can enjoy it. 
The fee to participate is only a tenth of the cost of an actual geisha course, so it's extremely popular and exciting. They explain uh, what to do, they explain the things, and uh, it's very good to be so close. I win! <laughs> and that's a geisha party for you. No need to be embarrassed, that's just how it goes here. Next time you come to Japan, why don't you become a little tiger yourself? Kamaishi, a city in Iwate Prefecture. In 2011, it was devastated by the tsunami at the time of the Great East Japan earthquake. One of the survivors was the city's only active geisha, Tsuyako Ito, who is now 87. <laughs> the tsunami destroyed her home. She's still living in temporary housing. After the disaster, her work at geisha parties dried up almost completely. But she's taking good care of her shamisen, the essential tool of her trade. After the Second World War, geisha culture flourished in Kamaishi, and geisha parties were often held in the city. Ito was proud to follow in the glamorous footsteps of the other geisha in her hometown. But as the city began to decline, so too did the number of geisha. Finally, in the 1990s, Ito became the last one. Then, in March 2011, a tsunami engulfed the city, and Ito was suddenly an evacuee. Her livelihood was in jeopardy. She had lost clients and close friends. In this dark time, one friend showed Ito a poem that had been written by someone whose factory was destroyed by the tsunami. Called Flee Away, it has an instructional purpose, to keep people conscious of the danger of tsunami and of the importance of getting away quickly. Ito, as Kamaishi's last geisha, believed it was her mission to put the words to music and choreograph a dance. Having failed to train a successor, this would be her legacy to the community. Two years ago, this summer festival was held for local evacuees. Ito had spent half a year working on the song. She kept the choreography simple so that anyone could learn it. And she incorporated stylized running motions to symbolize the need to flee a tsunami as fast as possible. At first, Ito was dancing on her own. But as people watched and learned, they joined in. Eventually, more than 100 were dancing. Now Ito's aim is to spread flea away all through the city of Kamaishi. She performs the dance whenever people gather and she invites them to dance with her. Mm. 
残るものもあれば残らないものもあるけど、私はこれのね、よあの、スタッフラウンドだけは残してあげたいと思ってる。85年の、これは証ですね。These days, people generally retire around 60-ish, mm. and social security is becoming a problem in a lot of countries now. So the fact that a woman can continue to work until the age of 87, or in Yugo-san's case, 91, is really quite remarkable. When you have an art, when you have a skill, and you keep trying to perfect it, you'll always shine. You'll never fade away. And talking about cultivating and perfecting the arts, I hope more people like Yuko-san will come along in the future. I know it's not easy, but I hope others will follow in her footsteps. I do think this is important for preserving Japan's traditional culture. Mm. Well, Chihana is just about to start. Um, she's obviously very positive about, about her work. I think it's going to be, quite honestly, very difficult mm. to maintain mm. this level of uh, quality in the geisha's work uh, in the 21st century. But on the other hand, looking at Yuko-san, mm. there's um, a, a sparkle in her mm. eye, um, her skin looks beautiful. There's just, she's so alive and an extremely charming woman. And, and to think that, you know, she can have worked in her field for 75 years and she is how she is now, it says something for her, for her line of work, I think. And it was fascinating just to observe her at such close distance. So thank you very much for the opportunity to do that. Thank you very much. time sports days special annual gatherings with competitions in all sorts of races and games we'll explore the appeal of these events and their more than 100 years of history in japan